Hey guys, welcome back to um, Kindergarten Ready, and we're going to do a few more chapters in Jenny B. Jones and the Yucky Blucky Fruitcake. All right, it's written by Barbara Park and illustrated by Denise Brunkus. All right, chapter five. Do you remember what's happening? Chapter one and two, she stayed with Grandpa Frank Miller, and she won all the games she played with him, but then she went to school and the same games that she played with Miller, Grandpa Frank Miller, she played with Lucille and Grace, and she lost because she was cheating. <laughs> so she was all upset, and then she found out there's going to be a carnival at her school on Friday, and that there's going to be hundreds of prizes. And so she practiced at home, and what did she get stuck in the toilet? A sponge. Yeah, she was practicing throwing sponges at principal, and she threw it in the toilet, and then she... Her mama came to the door and she tried to flush it and it got stuck in the toilet and it backed up the toilet and there was water everywhere. So then her and her mommy had to have a talk about winning isn't everything and it's okay to lose sometimes and that the fun is just playing the games, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started, okay? Chapter five, stupid, dumb carnival games. Carnival night was Friday after dinner. Daddy drove me and mother there in the car seat, only not baby Ollie, cause he's a fuss budget, I think, that's why. I unbuckled my seatbelt and looked out the window. Hey, I said, look at all the lights on the playground. It looks like a real alive carnival out there. I looked harder, and guess what else? There are clowns at this place. Ollie, don't you let them get near me, okay? Cause clowns are not normal, I think. Hey, there's my bestest friend named Lucille, I yelled. I hurried up out of the car. Lucille, hey, Lucille, look, it's me. It's Junie B. Jones. It's me. I'm at carnival night. Me and Lucille run at each other. She had red hearts painted on her face. Look at me, Junie V. Look how beauteous I am, she said. I just got my face painted by Mrs. Hall, the art teacher. She puckered her lips at me. And see my lips? My Nana put red lipstick on them so they would match my hearts. Lucille's lips were shiny and slickish. I tried to touch the bottom one, but Lucille said, don't smudge me. Just then, Mother and Daddy caught up with me. Daddy had bought tickets for all the carnival games. Ready to start, he said. Yes, I said, because I've been waiting for this exciting evening my whole entire career. I run and run till I found my most favorite game. Its name was Puttin' the Golf Ball. There was a long green carpet there. The carpet had a little hole with a flagpole in it. And also, there was a man holding golf clubs. I ran up to him. Guess what? I'm going to win a prize at this thing, I said, because I've been practicing my putting very hard. Good for you, said the man. Then he gave me a golf club, and he put a teeny white ball in front of me. It was the teeniest ball I ever saw. It, I looked at it for a yeah. real long time, and then I tapped on him. I, I mostly just put grapefruit, I explained. The man did a frown. Hurry up, okay? The other children are waiting, he said. Yeah, only I can also use a dinner roll, I told him. Please, he grouched, just hit the ball. And so that's how come I felt pressure inside me, and I swing the golf club way back hard, and I hit that very tiny ball very hard. It zoomed right off the green carpet, then it flied in the air, and it bounced, then bounced, then bounced, and people shouted the word of, ouch! I quick gave that man his golf club, and then me and Mother and Daddy rushed out of there very fast. Mother looked upset. Why don't we try a game where she can't actually kill someone, she said. Hey, I know a game where I can't actually kill someone, I shouted, and its name is Clothespins in a Bottle. I run and run till I found it. Clothespins, please, I said to the lady. She gave me five of them. And then she told me all the instructions. Just hold the clothespins at waist level and drop them one at a time into this milk bottle, she said. She put an empty milk bottle at the, my feet. She, it had a little hole at the top where the milk pours out. Drop two clothespins in the bottle and you win a prize. I stared and stared at the little hole. How come that hole's so little, do you think? I asked the lady. I don't know, she said. Just go ahead and start. I scratched my head. Um, yeah, only I don't even know how cows can squirt their milk into such a teeny thing, I said. The lady tapped her foot. There are other children waiting, she said. I looked up at her. Have you ever thought of using a bucket? I said. Just go, she grouched. So then I felt pressure inside me again, and then I hurried and dropped my clothespins. Then I hurried to drop my clothespins into the teeny hole. Only every single one of them fell right on the floor. My eyes got tears in them. See? Said, I told you that dumb hole was too little. Well, just then a clown saw me being sad and he grinned a giant grin at me. 
and I hide it behind my mother's skirt. Don't let him get near me, I told her. Only the clown ran right over and he picked his white face close to me. His teeth were big and yellowish. Back off, clown! I shouted. She really doesn't like clowns, does she? <laughs> then Daddy closed his eyes and Mother said the words of, Oh my. After that, me and Mother had a little talk and it's called No Screaming Back Off, Clown. Only I never even heard of that rule before. My nose got sniffly. <laughs> Carnival night isn't being fun. I said very sad. So that's how come Daddy bought me an ice cream cone and Mother brought, bought me a red balloon. Only too bad for me because when she handed me the string, my ice cream dropped on the ground and my balloon string slipped right out of my fingers. I bended my head back and watched my balloon float up into the sky. And then my eyes got more tears in them. And I said the word of poop. Oh, poor Junie B. Okay, let's read chapter six, Bullseye. That sounds better, doesn't it? Remember when she got it in the, the sponge in the toilet pot? She called it, she held Bullseye. So let's see if this chapter, things turn around for you. Ready? Okay. Carnival night was being the worstest night of my life. That's because I kept on losing at every single game. I lost at penny toss and I lost at ring toss. And also I lost at the stupid fishing booth. Except all you have to do is hang a fishing pole over the table and someone puts a toy on your pole. Only I just got a stupid dumb comb on my pole and that's all. Hey, what kind of stupid dumb prize is this? I said a stupid dumb comb isn't even a toy. I can't even play with this stupid dumb thing. Mm -mm. Daddy sat me down on a bench. Me and him had another talk. It was called, Stop Saying the Word Stupid and Dumb. And also, I have to appreciate my comb. Just then, I heard a voice holler, Jeannie B. Jones, hey, Jeannie B. Jones, I've been looking all over the place for you. I turned around. It was my other bestest friend, that Grace. She was holding lots of stuff in her hands. Look, Jeannie B., look at all my prizes. I won a shiny plastic cart and some pretty barrettes and a delicious red lollipop and two rubber bands two rubber bugs, and an eraser that looks like a hot dog. See them? See all my good stuff? Yeah, so, I said. That Grace did a frown at me. How come you said, yeah, so? How come you're grouchy at me, Junie B? And why are you sitting on this bench? I did a mad breath. <sighs> I'm appreciating my comb. That's why. Don't you know anything, Grace? Just then, Daddy walked me away from that, Grace, and he said, I better shape up, little Missy, or else we're going home right now. Mother told me to calm down, told Daddy to calm down his blood pressure. We well, have three tickets left, she said. Let's all take some deep breaths and start over again. <sighs> what do you think, Junie B? Do you want to try the sponge throw? That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Then Mother held my hand and me and her went to find the sponge throw and Daddy kept on doing deep breaths. The sponge throw was right in the middle of the playground. Principal was there. He was standing behind a board with a big clown suit painted on the front, only instead of a face, there was a round hole cut in the board, and Principal's head was sticking out of it. His face and hair were very drippity. That's because he kept on hitting him with, that's because kids kept on hitting him with sponges. It looked like the funnest game I ever saw. I hurried up and got in line, except for just then something terrible happened, and its name is that Jim I hate got in line right behind me. Boo, he said. You did not scare me, Jim, I said. Yes, I did. No, you did not. Yes, I did too. And anyways, you shouldn't even be in this line because girls can't throw as good as boys, he said. Yes, they can too, I said. And I even practiced this game at my house and I made it bullseye right in my toilet pot. So there. That mean Jim laughed real loud. P.U. Junie B. Jones plays in her toilet, he said. And so then all the other kids started laughing too. Just then, the sponge lady tapped on me and she handed me two soaky wet sponges. Excuse me. Your turn, sister, she said. Only I just kept on standing there and standing there because all those meanie kids wouldn't stop laughing. Guess what? I, I don't even know if I can throw these things now because all that laughing is ruining my self-esteem, I said. Sorry, sis. Either throw the sponges or get out of line, the lady told me. And so finally I took a big breath and I aimed my sponge at Principal's baldy head and I threw with all my muscles. Missed him! You missed him! Ha 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 ha! Said that Jim I hate. 
That's how come my temperature boiled over and I quick spun around and I throwed my other sponge right at that meanie boy's face. It hit him right in the kisser. What does that mean? In the kisser. Right in the mouth. Bullseye! I shouted very happy. And then I run out of that place as fast as I could because I was in big trouble. That's why. Look at her face. Look at Jim. He looks so mad. Judy B. Jones yelled mother. Judy B. Jones yelled daddy. I run and run till I saw a giant moon mock tent. Then I quick climbed inside it and I throwed my shoes out the door because no shoes are allowed in there. The moonwalk tent is like a big, puffy house. You can jump far and wide in that place. I jumped and jumped till sweat came on my head. This is the finest jumping I ever saw, I said very springy. Except for just then, the tent lady blew her whistle. Time's up, she yelled. I peeked out the door. Mother and Daddy were waiting for me. They weren't smiling. I, I think I'll stay in here, I said. Only just then Daddy came over and he lifted me right out the door. I smiled very pleasant. Hello, how are you today? I said, big, but daddy didn't say hello, and he just carried me right back to that mean gym. He made me say apology to him, and also to his mother. Sorry I throwed a sponge at your meanie boy's face, I said. Daddy rolled his eyes way back far in his head, and he carried me back to the moonwalk tent. Get your shoes, he said. We're going home. Yeah, only I was just starting to have fun, I said. Plus, I didn't even get to do the cakewalk yet, and it's in my very own room nine. I told you to get your shoes said Daddy very grumpy. And so I went to the shoe pile, but I could only find one shoe and not the other. I tapped on the tent lady. Can you help me find my other shoe? See what they look like? They're shiny and black with a strap that buckles. Their name is Pat and Leather. Then me and her and Mother and Daddy looked for my other shoe, but we couldn't find it anywhere. Darn it, I said. Now my feet are ruined, and I started to cry a teeny bit. Then Daddy smoothed my hair, and he said the word, don't worry. You and Mother go on to the cakewalk, and I'll stay here and find your other shoe, he said. And so then Mother holded my hand, and me and her walked to room nine with just Pat and no leather. Okay, chapter seven's called Winning, and we'll do this one tomorrow night. Sweet dreams. Mwah.